Hey everybody, it's back to school time. And at this time of year, I nearly always get a fresh batch of guitar students on my college roll sheets looking to major in the guitar. Now, in my part of the country, most incoming guitar players can play, but have little to no formal training and usually can't even read music. Now, on the classical side of things, we have to bite the bullet and begin formal study with reading and classical technique, which is a long-term process. Now, on the jazz side of things, we can usually get right down to brass tacks a little quicker simply by harnessing the student's knowledge of popular music styles. And if you recall in an earlier video, what exactly is blues? I showed how the blues form is common to all of our popular music styles, including jazz. So let's talk about how to transition from a rock background to playing jazz using the 12 bar blues form as our vehicle. So here's the blues. We've talked about it before, and it'll be one of the first things that any incoming freshman will encounter when they come into a guitar program. Notice, though, that all the chords have become dominant seventh or what we call seventh chords. Why? Well, because when we transition into the world of jazz, one of the first things that we notice is that jazz is a seventh chord and beyond medium. Now, that doesn't mean that all chords become dominant. It simply tells us that each chord will probably be built from some sort of seventh. And there are several sorts, and we'll talk about those in another video. So how do we start? Well, in my experience, most incoming freshmen know some bar chords. So let's start there. Notice I've rewritten the uh, blues progression behind me into the key of B flat. Now, if we play a blues in the key of B flat, we would encounter B flat seven, E flat seven, and F seven, meaning we can use some familiar bar chord shapes. Now, notice that the seven chords give a funky edge uh, to the chord sequence. Now, this is cool and all, and lots of players already do this type of playing, but it's not necessarily an ideal situation for playing in a jazz group. So let's talk about a better type of chord voicing, the shell voicing. So what is a shell voicing? Well, out of the four notes which make up a dominant seven chord, a root, a third, a fifth, and a flat seven, a shell voicing uses only the one, the three, and the flat seven. So if we go back to our blues progression in B flat, our B flat seven or one, which is a root six shell voicing will look like this. Now, at this point, some of you might be thinking this has to be a joke. There's only three notes. This won't be any good. Well, here's the thing. The weight of a chord isn't necessarily dependent on the number of notes in the chord. In other words, a three note voicing can carry more weight than a six note voicing if the notes are spaced and arranged or voiced in a certain way. So listen to the standard bar voicing. It's not bad. Now listen to the shell voicing. And notice the shell voicing is a little more focused, uh, yet at the same time, it's still deeper and it's punchier. Well, why is this? So I just mentioned that the weight of a chord depends on the spacing of the notes. And here's our written bar chord. And here's our written shell voicing. Now look at the bottom two notes of each chord. In the bar, we see an interval of a fifth. Now a fifth is a pretty open spacing, so we're off to a good start. But look at the bottom of the shell voicing. It's a minor seventh, almost an octave. Now, as a general rule, the more space between the bass and the tenor voices, the more depth the chord will have. So now that we've dealt with the one chord, let's proceed on to the four and the five chords. Now, usually as guitarists, we're inclined to default to this type of bar chord at the sixth fret for our four and at the eighth fret for the five. But the shell voicing will look like this. So for some of you, some alarms should be going off in your head, screaming, warning, warning, there's only a third in the bottom of this voicing. And you know what, you're right. Still, that's punchier than the bar chord form. Now, there's a quick, simple trick to give this shell voicing a little more depth uh, that uh, is similar in weight to the root six shell. Simply take the bass note from the fifth string, move it to the sixth. 
Now, all this does is put the bass, uh, put the fifth of the chord in the bass, which gives us a bottom interval of a major sixth. And that amount of space will always fatten up a chord. Now, let's see what happens if we put these chord voicings together in a B-flat blues, just like I have written behind me. You should notice a few things. Number one, because there are only three strings in each chord, we have to learn to mute the other three strings with our left hand fingers as we're playing the active notes. Now, this can seem really awkward at first, but don't worry, I've taught these voicings to tons of students and everybody works it out. Just put a little time into it and the chords will come together really quickly. Number two, notice that the bass note of each chord stays on the sixth string, and it never has to travel more than two frets. All this does is add a ton of stability and fatness to the chord, uh, to the foundation of the chord progression. Let the bass player move around all over the place. That's his job anyway. Number three, if we strike the strings energetically and mute them slightly with our left hand, we turn into drummers. Now, if you want to hear a hard swinging drummerless jazz group, check out the quintet of the Hot Club of France featuring Django Reinhardt and Stefan Grappelli. Now, Joseph Reinhardt and Roger, Roger, I know I'm going to butcher his last name, Chaput, um, play their guitars with such a rhythmic intensity that a drummer would just muddy the waters. Four, notice that my right hand never touches the strings. All of the muting is done with my left hand. And also notice that my right hand never touches the top of the guitar. Let your arm do the work. This is where the percussiveness comes in. And when we see how percussively we're striking the strings, this simply underscores the importance of learning how to mute all of the excess notes out of the chord. Now, keep in mind that this is merely the first step in our transition to playing jazz. Now, stylistically, these chords and this rhythm style of playing are most at home in a big band or gypsy jazz setting. However, these voicings can be fleshed out into extended and altered voicings, which are not only hipper sounding, but are also great for small group comping, um, uh, Latin tunes, bossa nova, and chord melody applications. Now, in the next Jazz Transitions video, which I'll do in a couple of weeks, let's learn a couple of minor voicings and discuss how to play a minor blues. Thanks for watching String Em Up. My name is Dave Holland, and remember to like, share, and subscribe if you enjoy the content on the channel. Also, feel free to leave comments and suggestions for any topics you might like to see in future episodes. So everybody, have fun, stay safe, and study hard. See you next time. Bye.